talking about the migrate module. And this presentation is really geared towards site builders. So if you've used migrate before, this might be a nice kind of review or a different perspective on migrate, but you uh, might already be familiar with a lot of the materials I'm going to cover, because it's really going to be an introductory session. Um, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about migrate from the perspective of why you might want to use it for different types of projects that you haven't considered before. So I hope you'll all get something out of this talk. Um, just as an introduction about me, uh, I work mostly as a site builder and as a themer. I do some Drupal training as well. Uh, my name's Suzanne Dergachova and I work at Evolving Web in Montreal. We do a lot of uh, Drupal consulting and development projects, and we also do Drupal training. And we've uh, developed a training on the Migrate module, so if you're interested in more about that, please come talk to me afterwards. Um, we, we work at Evolving Web on a lot of large-scale Drupal projects, which have an obvious use case for the Migrate module, but we also work on, on smaller projects that we use Migrate for as well. So these days we're using the Migrate module for almost all of our projects in one way or another. So to get started with, I'll just talk a little bit about what, what Migrate is for those of you who are new to it. And just to get a sense, how many of you have used Migrate before on, on projects? Are there many of you? Okay. So some of you out there have, have used it before. Um, so Migrate is basically a way to get content or data into your website programmatically. So if you're starting out with a, a brand new project, uh, it's a way for you to pull content in, into your website. And uh, it's an alternative to creating content manually. So if you are creating your first Drupal site and you're just getting started with Drupal, you're probably going to go in there and go to the content page and click add content and start creating your content that way, which is perfectly natural because Drupal is a content management system. Um, but as soon as you start getting a little bit more content uh, and getting a little bit more familiar with Drupal, you might be looking for a better way of doing things. Um, so there's different ways that we have with Drupal of getting content into our websites. So, like I said, the most obvious way is just to do it by hand. You have some content that you want to put up on your site, you go and click the Add Content button. Um, but there's some other modules out there that help you create content uh, programmatically so that you don't have to copy and paste the content in by hand. So we have the Feeds module, which has been around for a while, that people use, especially when they're pulling in content on a regular basis. So if you have an RSS feed or some other type of feed and you want that content to appear on your site, you can use the feeds module. Uh, the realistic dummy content module is a module that um, people have started using recently to create sample content on your site. It works with the Devel Generate module to do that. Um, but it's really not meant to be used as a permanent solution for creating real content that's going to live on your site once it's launched. Um, you can also create a custom migration script. So if you're familiar with writing scripts and, and uh, writing code, then that might be an option for you. Um, but the Migrate module has really become a standard. Uh, it gives you a lot of tools for adding content to your site. So you don't have to do a lot of, a lot of coding, but um, it, it kind of helps you to automate the process of, of creating content. And so the reason that we go with the Migrate module is that it's really become a best practice for creating content on your site. It streamlines the process of content creation. So um, instead of you creating content kind of as you feel like it when you're building your site, you're, you're creating it always in the same, using the same method. And um, it's useful for a lot of Drupal projects. So I'll talk a little bit about, about that now, about why you might want to use this Migrate module. Um, so let's say your 
we're upgrading an old site to, let's say, Drupal 7. So you have an old Drupal 6 site, or you have an old website that was built using some other kind of system, and you want to get all that content from the old site and put it into your brand new Drupal 7 site. Um, in this case, you might be working with hundreds of pieces of content, maybe even thousands of pieces of content, and it would be an impossible task to create all of that content by hand. So in this case, using Migrate is a really obvious choice just because of the quantity of content that you're dealing with. Um, so Migrate gives you a tool for taking all the content from that old database, whatever type of website it is, and moving it into Drupal. Um, so Migrate can also be used as a pretty obvious choice for websites where you're using third-party content. Let's, let's say you're building a website that uses open data. Are you all familiar with the open data kind of movement? So you have these databases of information that people have made available, uh, maybe from the government or maybe from some nonprofit organization, um, and you want to get that content into your website. So again, you're probably talking about a lot of content and it would be impossible to create it all by hand. Um, now the third use case is maybe a use case that you're more, you're dealing with on a more regular basis as site builders. You're creating a, a new website and you're just populating that website from um, new, new content or content that your client is giving you maybe with um, maybe by creating Word documents, or maybe um, the client is taking content from the old website and kind of rewriting it and then giving it to you to put on the new website. So this is a really common use case, right? You're, you're building a new website, you wanna refresh the content, and, and so you need to, to take that content and put it on your site. And in all three of these cases, I would say using the Migrate module is really, the, the best choice you can do because um, in each case you want to be streamlining that content creation. Um, now in the third case you might say, well, why would I use Migrate to populate content on a new site? If the client is just giving me that content, it's just as easy for me to copy and paste the content into, into Drupal as it would be to say, put it into a, a CSV file and use a module to migrate it. Um, and I think there's lots of good reasons why you might use Migrate, even for this kind of simpler use case. First of all, if you're um, creating content directly on a website and you're building that website at the same time, you're gonna have lots of inconsistencies. So I'm sure you've done this before. You've created a Drupal website with some content types, and then your client sends you the content, and then you realize, oh, I have to change the fields in my content type. So then you start to change the configuration, and then you have some older content on your site that's out of date, so it might not have all the same fields as the newer pieces of content. Um, so if you're using the Migrate module, instead of creating the content right in, in Drupal, you can put that content, let's say, in a, in a CSV file. Or if you're really fancy, maybe in a set of JSON files or, or something like that. Some more, you know, general format. Um, and so you can develop that content, and in parallel, you can be configuring the actual website and doing the site building. Um, and so this process of kind of separating out the content from the site building, it, gives, it can give your clients more control over that content. So instead of you, the site builder, having to create all the content through Drupal, do all the configuration, you can tell your client, okay, go fill up this CSV file with, um, with all the content for the website. I'll show you how to do it. And meanwhile, I'm gonna be configuring the site and um, creating the views, creating the content types, and putting that all in place. So there's a place for that content to live. Um, and this might also give you the chance to start working with real content sooner. Because if you're responsible for creating the content in the site and doing the site building, 
you're probably going to create some, some sort of fake placeholder content on your site. This is what people, or have people done this before? Who here has created Laura missed some content for their website? Yeah, it's uh, not, not fun, right? You're not quite sure, like, I guess this is what they're gonna put, it's gonna be something like this. Um, so you're not really sure what you're working with. So by kind of separating it out and saying, okay, I'm gonna build the site, but I'm also gonna have a place for this content to live, you have, um, you have an opportunity to maybe start working with real content on the website a bit sooner. Um, and then finally, what, what I've tried recently to start to do on projects is instead of having one database that I'm working with to build the site and create the content, I try not to have um, a master database. So I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with the term master database, but basically it's when you only have one version of the database that's like the version you can launch with the version with all the content and all the correct configuration. Instead, what I'm trying to do now with our projects is to create um, sort of components that you can put together to build out the final database. So if you have a lot of configuration on your website, a best practice with Drupal 7 right now is to put it into features, right? People are here using features? Most of you, yeah? So, so it's like a way of you know, storing all of your configuration in one place. Um, Migrate kind of does the same thing with your content. So instead of you creating the content in one database, and then if you lose that database or something goes wrong with it, then you kind of have to start from scratch. Uh, with Migrate, you can put all of that content creation into your migration. So when you're ready to launch your site, you can create these migrations and uh, your site is ready to go. So I think you'll see more how this works as I show you the migrate module for those of you who are new to it. But these are all just reasons why um, migrate is useful for even sim simpler websites that you might be building. So how does the migrate module work exactly? Um, there's a, a couple key pieces to migrate. Um, so when you're, when you're creating content in Drupal, you always have a, a source of your content. When you're creating content manually, that might just be a Word document or an email from your client. Um, but when you're using the migrate module, the source content is always some kind of structured file of information. Um, so the example I'm gonna be using today uh, is uh, using a CSV file because I think that's something everybody's familiar with, working with spreadsheets. Um, but there's all kinds of sources you can use with Migrate as well. CSV is just one example. Um, so you take that source and then you're able to create content in Drupal. And in, in um, when you're using the migrate module, we call this the destination. So you have your source, which is where the content's coming from, and then the destination is where the content is going to. So this might be a content type, a taxonomy term, um, user comments, you know, some type of content in Drupal that's being created. Um, and so with migrate, you can, you're moving content from the source to the destination, and you can create the migration, or sorry, run the migration uh, to test it out. And Migrate makes it really easy to undo that. So normally when you're creating content in Drupal, you know, you might create 50 nodes, you create a view, and then you realize that there's some problem with the content you've created. And you have to go back in, maybe delete all the content or edit it to make a change. Um, but with Migrate, it's just one drush command or one click uh, in the UI to run your migration, um, and then you can roll it back to undo the migration, and then maybe make a change and try it again. So it makes this process of creating content really, really simple to test. Um, and with Migrate, the, the one kind of caveat for site builders is that we have to write some code when we're using Migrate. 
So it's not just a tool that we're using through the Drupal UI. There is some code that you have to write. And I like to think of this code kind of like a template. Um, so I'm, I'm really a site builder. I'm not, I don't consider myself really a backend developer, but I do write modules for Migrate to create migrations for our site. And I think of it as being like a template. Like I always kind of start off with the same template for the migration, and then I'm kind of filling in the blanks to tell Drupal where to get the content from and, w and where to put it. Um, so to use the migrate module and to, to create a migration, I think the most important thing to know about is really site building. So the first, the first step is really to create the configuration on your site where the content is gonna live. Um, you also have to kind of have a, an interest in, in working with content. So uh, knowing about the content that's gonna be created on the site is an important part of the process. Um, and then it's also important to be able to write a simple module in Drupal. So not being scared of that, that's an important step as well. Or an important part of, of being able to write a migration. So the example that I'm gonna run through today, it's crea uh, creating a migration from a CSV file and creating um, nodes in Drupal. And the use case for this example, it's a small university website that, and the university wants to create a website that lists all the programs that they offer. And so far, they don't have any place, like any database that lists all the programs. It's so far all been print materials that students have used. Um, so they need to create a CSV file or a, you know, a spreadsheet that contains all the program information. And then we want to have an easy way to get that into Drupal. And we have to launch the site in about a month. Um, and so we don't really have time to create the content manually. The client has to be putting together this spreadsheet while the Drupal team is busy working on actually creating the site, doing the theming, and, and so forth. So Migrate works with all kinds of different sources, like I was mentioning. Um, CSV files are the example I'm gonna use today. And the basic steps for creating a migration in Drupal, um, you're gonna wanna start off by preparing the website for the content you're gonna create, so at least having uh, the content type set up. Um, if you're creating taxonomy terms or users, you'd want to configure those elements as well. Then preparing the content source, so in this case our CSV file, creating the migrate module um, for your custom migration, running the migrations, and then testing and iterating is a big, an important step too, because it's probably not going to work exactly like you expected the first time. So preparing your site and preparing the content. Like I said before, we have two important parts of a migration. We have the destination, where the content's coming from, or sorry, the destination is where the content is going, and the source is where the content's coming from. And with a CSV file, it's pretty easy to visualize because each column in your CSV file is gonna correspond to a field or some kind of property in your Drupal uh, content type or whatever your destination is. Um, and, uh, and sometimes if you have things like multi-value fields, you'd, create, you'd separate the field with, with a comma or some other kind of, of separator. So the first part, setting up your content type. This is the part that we're really good at, right? We're site builders. We're gonna configure the site to have whatever fields we need, whatever content type settings we would normally have. Um, and then the, the more tricky part comes maybe with preparing your CSV. So this is something that, you know, in the case of this example, I'd wanna give to my client to do. I don't know anything about the programs of this university, so I want the client to have a place to put this content while we're getting the Drupal site ready. So rather than 
um, just giving them this task and saying, oh, client, go and create a CSV. They're not going to necessarily organize the content the right way. So what I would suggest is giving them some kind of a template for their content. So maybe create a CSV file, add all the columns that you would expect to have for the fields in your content type, um, and then fill in a couple rows of sample content, like that work that you usually do of creating lorem ipsum text. Uh, well, don't use lorem ipsum, try and be a little bit more creative. Um, but put in some sample content into the CSV, how you would imagine, you know, what you would imagine the university's programs would be like. So maybe you put in a program for, uh, you know, teacher education or um, whatever the case may be. They might have already provided you with some of this in their design, so it's just a matter of putting it into the file. Um, for things like images, where you have an image file and also an alt text, each of these can be separate columns. If you have things like properties, like the author of the content, uh, their, their user ID, you could put that into a separate column as well. So it doesn't just have to be fields. And what you want to try and do is have maybe one tab open with your, um, with your content type configuration, and then another tab open with your CSV, and just try and make sure that the, the two things line up. So if you have a multi-value field in your content type, make sure you have a field where you can have more than one value in your CSV. And uh, in the CSV file, for the clients especially, I like to have two rows at the top, one for kind of the label, and then one with some instructions about what they're supposed to put there. So if it's supposed to be text, or if it's supposed to be um, a file name, or a multi-value field separated by commas, um, you can put that right into your CSV. So once you have all of this ready, you have some sample content, you have some, you have your configuration, um, you're ready to actually create the module. Um, and so basically what you need for a simple migrate module, um, you need to have one file, typically in your, in your migrate module, that contains the information about the migration. Um, so in this case, my module is called migrate underscore programs, and that file is just going to be migrate underscore programs dot migrate dot ink. And then I also have a dot module file and a dot info file. So if you've ever created a module before in Drupal, this is going to be really uh, familiar. Um, if not, it's a good learning step. So. Um, each module and theme in Drupal 7 has a, an info file, so you, uh, you just have to include some basic information about the migration. Um, and then in this case, we're also going to put a dependency on the migrate module, because you'll need to have that enabled to run the migration. And we'll also add an extra file, uh, migrate underscore programs dot migrate dot ink, that has the migration in it. Um, and all the code that I'm showing you here, I have it up on GitHub. Um, so there's some links that you'll see here uh, if you want to actually go and, and look at the code while I'm showing it to you. So in the module file itself, you have to uh, include a little bit of information about your migration. And basically all we're doing here is we're naming the migration. Um, so if you're using this as a template for your own um, migration that you're writing, just replace the word programs with whatever um, identifier you have for what you're migrating. Um, and, and down here in this function where we're defining the migration, the most important thing that we're doing is kind of telling Drupal what the, the name is for our migration, for our migration. So we have uh, the word programs in the migrations array, we have programs, and then we have our class name which you're going to see in a second when we actually define the migration. And then an another thing called a group name. And this, this, in this example, it's not too useful because we're just migrating programs. There's just one thing to migrate. 
But you can imagine on a typical website, you're probably not just migrating programs. You might be also migrating instructors or faculties or other information. And so you can, you can put all of these migrations into a group so that when you create your site, they'll, all the content will be migrated at the same time. So now we come to the main part of our migrate code, which is where we're defining our, our migrations. So uh, here we're defining um, a custom class called migrate programs, which again you could just replace with whatever um, with whatever you are migrating. So this could be migrate instructors um, or migrate faculty. And basically, this is just using a format that the migrate module provides to define your migration. So you're telling migrate what, what you want to migrate, what the, the source is for your content, where you want to put your content, and then how to, to map these things together. So if you can look at the code for uh, here, just to see as an overview, we have two functions that we're defining, um, a constructor function and then a function called prepare row. So the constructor is the main function where we're defining the migration. And in here, we're going to do basically four things. We're going to tell the migrate module how to identify our rows of content. And to do this, we need to tell migrate something that's unique about each row. And this is what lets Migrate um, pull in all the content and then be able to, to roll it back. So that, that um, feature of being able to undo a migration, that's only possible because my, the Migrate module has a way to identify each piece of content that you've pulled in. So that's the first thing we need to do in here. Um, we also need to tell Migrate where to get the content from. So where is this? CSV file. We need to tell Migrate uh, where to put the content. So what's the destination? Is it a node? Is it a user? Um, and then how to map the source and the destination together. So those four lines of comments there, those are kind of like placeholders for the four things we need to do. So I'll show you that code in the next few slides. So first of all, we have to have a way to identify the content. So in the CSV example that I showed, there's just an ID column. So this is kind of the simplest way of identifying your content if you actually put an ID on each thing. And this, this doesn't um, correspond to a node ID. It's an ID that Migrate's going to use to keep track of this content. So if you run your migration and then you roll it back and then you run your migration again, um, and let's say you repeat it 50 times because you make a bunch of mistakes, your node IDs in your, on your site, they're going to get really high. You have 50 nodes times 50 migrations, you know, it's a lot. Your, your node IDs are going to be in the, in the thousands. Um, but the IDs here are always going to stay the same. So it's just a unique identifier that Migrate uses so it can roll back your migration. Uh, the second thing we're going to do here is uh, tell Drupal about the source of the migration. Uh, so in this case, we have a CSV file, and CSV files have these columns. And so what we're doing here is we're giving each column in our CSV file an identifier. So there's this array that we're creating called uh, CSV columns, and the number that's the the key in the array is just the number of the column. And it starts at zero. So the first column is the zeroth column. Um, and then we have an identifier for each uh, column that we want to use in our migration. Now, if you're using a CSV that maybe it's from some open data source or maybe it's a CSV from your client, you might have some columns that you don't want to migrate. So if you have some a column in your CSV file that's just called editor notes, you don't have to include that here. So not every column has to be listed. 
So columns that aren't just won't, you won't be able to migrate them. Um, and you can also see um, down here that um, when you define the, the source of your migration, you can give your, you can give the migrate module a link to the CSV file that you're migrating. And then you can also tell it to skip a certain number of rows. So if you have one row at the top of your CSV file that has the label for the columns, you'd want to skip that for sure. You might have a couple rows like I do uh, if you want to skip also the row that has the instructions for the author of the content. So this is all to tell Migrate about the source of your content. And when you're, it, when you're writing this code or when you're filling in this kind of template for your, for your content source, you're going to want to be looking at your CSV file and maybe counting the columns to make sure that everything's matching up. And uh, the third thing you'll want to do is to tell the Migrate module where to put your content. So the Migrate module calls this a destination handler. And here, when I tell the migrate module the destination, um, I tell it to use migrate destination nodes because I'm creating nodes. Um, you could do the same thing and replace the word node with uh, user or comment or some other type of entity in Drupal. And all the core entities that Drupal has are supported by the migrate module. If you want to migrate other types of things that aren't in Drupal core. There's uh, lots of modules out there that provide support for migrate. And there's also a module called Migrate Extra that provides support for certain modules. So sometimes you'll need to install Migrate Extras and sometimes the support is just gonna come with, um, with your module. So for example, if you're using the media module and you're migrating in a bunch of YouTube videos, um, there's a, a sub-module, I think it comes with media, called uh, Migrate Extras Media. Uh, or it might come with the Migrate Extras module. In any case, it's a sub-module that you have to enable to have um, a Migrate handler for your YouTube videos. So sometimes it takes a little bit of playing around with these modules to see what, what to use. But for things like nodes, taxonomy terms, users, it's very straightforward. You can just use the core migrate module. And so finally, you've told the migrate module about your source and your destination, and now you can map these things together. So looking back at the identifiers you used for your CSV columns um, and the names of your fields in Drupal, you can um, add field mapping for each of these in your migration. So when you're adding a mapping, the first, um, the first thing that you pass to the mapping is the name of the, the field in Drupal, and the second thing is the name of the, the source. So if you go back to your list of columns, the identifier that you use there, um, like uh, program level, program type, that's going to be the second value that you're passing to the mapping. And the first one is just, you should be familiar with that as a site builder, you know, you have all the names of your, your fields. Sometimes with things like images or links, you'll have extra attributes that you're going to map as well. So for an image, you have the, the image itself, but then you'd also want to have a mapping for the alt text if you want to migrate in on alt text for each of your images. Um, with a link field, you'd have a title and maybe a, a URL. So those would be different attributes. And for the attributes, you'll see there's a, uh, a colon. So you have the field name, colon, and then, and then an attribute. So that's all that's kind of required to create a migration. In some cases, you'll have to add one extra function to your, um, your class that you've created called uh, prepare row. And this is a function you can use to tweak your content before it gets saved in Drupal. So maybe in your CSV file, you have a bunch of content and you just want to make, you know, 
you want to change one thing about the content before you migrate it into Drupal. And I think the most common use case for this is if you have uh, multi-value fields. So for example, if you have a tag field that you want to migrate into Drupal, but you want Drupal to store each tag individually, uh, Drupal, or you know, the migrate module, is expecting to have an array of tags that it will create um, uh, to create the individual tags. Um, whereas in your CSV file, you just have the tags separated by commas. So in that case, in your prepare row function, oops, you can take your um, you can take your comma separated value list and then turn that into an array. I'm not too sure what happened to my slide. Yes, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so the question is why why do you have this extra step of having, you know, to list what the source is? and then to have to map that to the destination. Why can't you just do the mapping? And the reason is because you might have um, some fields that you want to make changes to before they're actually mapped to your field. Um, uh, so for example, if you have, um, let's say we're migrating in a list of authors. Um, if one of your fields is a field reference to another node, uh, can you migrate it then? Because I think the field reference is a node ID and it will be another node ID yeah. if it's on the destination. That's a great point. So I think the next thing I was going to show on my slides, um, if I ever get this laptop turned back on, uh, were some more examples of different types of fields. So one really common example that 
where do we have um, another node that you're referencing? And usually when you're creating a migration, you want to be in the migration, you want to be creating both nodes. So you want to be creating the node and the node that gets referenced. Um, so let's say in this example, we have a list of programs that we're migrating in. You might also have a list of constructors for those programs, and then you have the entity reference between the two. So what you do is you create two migrations. Um, you extend the migration class twice, and you create two of them, one for programs and one for instructors. And then in your CSV file for programs, you have an extra column for instructors, and then you have another CSV file that lists the, the instructors themselves. So you have the two, the entity file, um, and then in the instructors column, you include the ID for the instructor. That references the ID column in the instructor CSV. And then when you're creating the migration and you're doing the mapping, um, you tell the, the migration to use a different source migration. Um, so if you look at how the mapping works, and you can look at the uh, example code that I have up in my slide, there's, for, for each mapping, you can define um, uh, a default value. You can also define a source migration, which tells Migrate to look at that other migration to look at which instructor to reference. So that means that if you don't have to know what the node ID is, you can just uh, tell Migrate what the uh, unique identifier is, which Migrate is usually not that anyway. Um, so that, that would be the case of having like programs that reference instructors. You might also have a use case where you have programs that reference programs, right? You might have uh, a field of related programs. And then in that case, the source migration is going to be the same. So it's going to be the, the source migration will be also programmed. And you might run into some problems there because you might have a list of programs that you're migrating. And then you have this these related programs. But the related programs might not exist yet because you're just running through the migration one item at a time. Um, so the second program that you migrate might reference a related program that's at the end of your list. Um, and in that case, there's one more function that you can add to your migration uh, to create a sub. Um, and the sub, a sub node is just a sort of a placeholder node that Migrate will create for you until that program is actually migrated properly. So it will create a, a sub um, with that idea identifier that's referenced from entity reference and then when it gets to that um, when it gets to that program in the migration it'll fill in all the other details with all the other fields so th that case is a little bit more complicated um, but if you look up how to create a sub function in, in with migrate it's uh, pretty pretty straightforward um, and if you're looking for more examples so the code I have, um, it'll be online. I'll link to it from the section for uh, the, the, the page on the website for this talk. Um, but if you're looking for more examples, the Migrate module comes with a couple great example modules. And they're called uh, Beer and Wine. So there's the examples that are like for migrating a list of beer and migrating a list of wine. Um, and run into is um, when you have, when, when we've had a, a set of documentation where the source was an external repository and we wanted to use Migrate to pull that into Drupal on a regular basis. So it wasn't just a one-time migration, but a migration that was going to run um, every time the documentation was updated. So we had to customize Migrate so that the node IDs would stay the same so that our content wasn't always being um, completely overwritten and wiped. Um, so I don't know, if, is my colleague Dave here? Is anyone here? No? <laughs> um, so uh, I, I can't really speak too much to that just because that's not my expertise. Yes? Well, um, 
it's a question slash answer actually because uh, I've tackled this issue so I want to double check and see if w what I think is valid um, on the interface you actually have the source uh, navigation well, I can't read uh, that well it's source navigation because I had the tackle with taxonomy term I migrated the taxonomy term and then my content I wanted to have the same taxonomy term as it had on my Drupal 6 site so I think that if you put the source navigation there, the, um, the node migration that uh, the entity is referencing or the taxonomy term that is referencing and so on, it can map the movement, the, the, the migration, and it can still reference the same node slash taxonomy term slash entity. Uh, so it, I, believe it's, uh, I believe it. this is more or less how to do it slash question double check <laughs> if if it's a valid way that can answer the the question yeah so that it, you might have the same navigation or the same taxonomy term but the id might still be different because yeah but, but but the migration module knows which node id from drupal 6 goes to what node id in drupal 7. yeah so the references and should here stay you, the same. yeah um, and, and there you can choose which migration it can follow so it's the same with files, because you move files and you have a different file ID. But if you put there that you wanted to watch the, the migration of files that you have done before, then it can, it can follow and it can actually map the same files to the same uh, fields into the same nodes. Yeah. Seems right? What about if you want your site users to be able to upload a CSV file to your site and um, which automatically creates content to your site? Can um, migrate module help in this, this case? the code back here where we tell Drupal where to uh, get the, the content from. Uh, here we're defining a link that's in Drupal, but it could be a link that's anywhere. It could be a different module or just in a different place you don't want it. Um, and then how, getting the migration to actually run, that's also something that you can trigger with code. So we write migrations, we run them often through a deployment script. So we have a, a module that's called uh, whatever client name, deploy, and this is the, the module that's responsible for installing all the features on the site, all the modules, and then writing the migrations themselves. So it's something you can, can control programmatically and you can trigger that to happen when somebody clicks a button in the store. Thanks.
you have content that's being updated on a, a regular basis, the feed module definitely, um, well, it was written to accommodate feeds of content that change all the time. So it might be a good um, alternative to the top in this case. So I think it's, it's uh, six o'clock. So thanks so much for coming to the session and uh, um, uh, apologies for the technical <laughs> technical challenges. If you have more questions, feel free to come and, and chat with me later. And good luck to all of you with uh, using Migrate. I, I hope you all dive in head first and, and use the module. <laughs>